All right, look, we appreciate everybody being here today. Um, hope you guys are doing well. Um, you, you know, really over the last few weeks in terms of the process, it's been really good getting to know everyone, getting to meet all the new coaches, um, uh, get, getting to really the, the different scouts and everybody on the staff, getting to know everybody. And it's really been about dropping all of our egos and, and really blending philosophy. So we have people from a lot of different places and we're working hard to to adapt and adjust in some different areas. And and regardless of how we've been doing things or um, it, it's about doing it the right way moving forward. So that's really been the process um, up to this point. Um, we've had uh, the pro guys are working really hard, um, getting ready for the free agency process and, and working with the coaches to get their clear vision. We just wrapped up um, the February college meetings. Um, the entire staff was in town and and that went really well. The, the, the coaches, the scouts are, um, again, working really hard. Kyle Smith ran those meetings and, and they were really productive, a really productive two weeks. Um, so as we continue to go through the process, we're excited about getting into um, the Zoom meetings with the, with the players and the pro days and that whole process. But, um, but again, excited for you guys to be here and excited to answer some questions. All right, we'll go ahead and open up to questions and order a submission. Jason Butt, and if you can address who the question's to, Arthur or Terry. Hey guys, um, wanted to ask this to Terry. Um, you know, when you have a, a high draft slot, like fourth overall, you know, what are the determining factors when you guys are deliberating whether to take the best player available or to possibly trade back a crew picks, you know, given the salary cap issues at hand? Yeah, it's, it's a prime spot to be in, being at that, that number four spot, and, and there's so many different scenarios. There are going to be some really good players there at four. We can move up and, and we can move down and, and acquire more picks. There's just a lot of different scenarios um, to really go through. So it's it's a prime spot to be in. It's not somewhere we want to be in very often um, with this team. So uh, we're going to take advantage of that and we're going to be open to all possibilities. And then um... This one for, for Arthur, uh, you know, you guys released uh, uh, Ricardo Allen the other day. So just you know, where do you guys stand at safety? And, you know, by any chance, you know, Isaiah Oliver has been a guy who's kind of who kind of moved around a little bit last year. Is he somebody who might get a look there? Yeah, well, we're just we're in the beginning stages as, as T Terry and I are going through the roster. I mean, we're looking to add at any position, um, you know, Ricardo Allen, he, he was a heck of a player here and you know it's the circumstances of you know having to release him but we have all the respect in the world for Rico and we're gonna have to adapt Isaiah's a guy that's that's played inside we feel good about it with a lot of our guys we're, we're gonna value versatility but we're still really in the early stages of how we're gonna build this roster towards 2021. Thanks. Uh, for Terry um where are you all at with uh, you know people that may be free agency, uh, free agents in Mac, Kakezi, and uh, Keanu Neal, and uh, with uh, fifth-year options with regards to uh, Calvin Ridley and Hayden Hurst? That's that's like ten questions. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, and 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 we're not gonna. We're not going to discuss any of the individuals in terms of contracts, um, uh, you know, whether it's a UFA or um, a player under contract that um, whether we're talking about renegotiating contracts or extending contracts or fifth year options. Um, th those are going to be internal discussions. And then the first we're going to communicate directly with the players, directly with the agents. We want that to come from them first. So um, we're having all those discussions uh, about all those players, but that's not something we, we want to discuss in this forum. Okay, second question for, for Coach Smith. Um, we're, with the roster evaluations, can you go through the uh, offensive side of the ball for us at quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, and O-line? And I'll follow up with the defense later on. Oh, I love it. I love the uh, rapid-fire questions. <laughs> you know, we're, we're, again, we're, we're still in the early stages, and we feel good about some of the guys that, that have been here that we have. Uh, you know, there's some – good young linemen up front that we're excited to work with. And we're excited to work with some of the receivers on the outside as well. But again, we're, we're going to look to add 
at all times during the season. I mean, you, you never know when you could pick up players. I mean, last year in Tennessee, we we picked up Jeff Swain, a tight end, in, in the middle of August, and he ended up being a, a big contributor down the stretch for us as we made that playoff run. So we're going to always – it's a good – it's a constant evolution there. Uh, we feel good about some of the pieces we have coming back, but we'll, we'll always continue to add and look to add value and depth. Thank you. Tori McElhaney. Hello, hello. Um, so this question is kind of for both of y'all because I think that you both can add different perspectives to this, but you know, we're still in very uncharted territory in regards to how to scout virtually. And, I, and I'm sure there are some pro days that y'all will be able to go to in person, but I was just wondering if y'all could expound upon essentially how you're going to attack this offseason in kind of preparation for the draft in preparation for free agency moves and just kind of give me an overview of, of what that looks like. Yeah, we um, all start out. We, we really value uh, pro days. We always have. And, um, you know, the access obviously is going to be different uh, when you factor in COVID and, and what we're dealing with there. But um, that in-person Getting to see those players in, in person is critical, um, especially this year when you think about some of these players we haven't seen on the grass uh, this entire season when you're talking about the players that opted out. So it's important to get in there, even though we, you won't be able to put your hands on them like you used to um, do or um, you're not going to have the full access. It's going to be limited, um, but still it's important uh, to get in those buildings and, um, and see those players important in, in person and uh, in the Zoom meetings and and we're going through that process and um, hey, what's the right way to do it? Because we like to, the coaches like to watch film with the players. So we just need to find the most efficient way to do it. But um, but, but that's gonna be really important um, in this evaluation process. Yeah, and just to, to piggyback off that, we, you know, the one thing that, that helps is uh, we've been through almost a calendar year now of the, the Zoom world. And so there was a lot of lessons learned through our draft process last year, and even in our, our spring installations and the stuff we had to deal with in Tennessee early in the season. So we found different ways. I mean, it, you know, it's it was really it was really cool during the, the hiring process with the staff. I mean, years past, you may have flown somebody in, I may have gone and seen somebody somewhere, but it allowed us to talk to a lot, a lot of different candidates. And you just try to find lessons learned from mistakes you made, we may have made last year. I know for me, coaching things that learned what translated with Zoom, I uh, feel really good. I mean, we made some hires that we never, I never met in person until they showed up here, but felt good about it and the way we went about it and, and, and vetted them. And so it's like everybody, you have to adapt to the current times. Yeah, definitely. And uh, Terry, I think this is just a kind of a follow up for you. Is, is, how many pro days are y'all kind of hoping to get to in person? We're going to try to cover everything. We look at it like we're turning over every stone. And um, we sat out and kind of met with uh, with Kyle Smith and, and A. Rob and Dewan just yesterday, going through um, the pro days and making sure we're covered, making sure um, obviously me and Arthur will be at certain ones, and um, and some of them will make sure the coaches and the scouts. But uh, we want to cover everything, and um, we, we want to make sure we can get to out to as many as possible. Thank you. Is that fine? Hey, Coach, when I asked you about uh, the evaluation of the roster when you had your introductory press conference, you said, uh, I'd love to tell you, but my focus this past year was on Tennessee. So I was wondering over the past month, uh, has there been a pleasant surprise, uh, an individual you knew of but didn't really know how you know well they played that's kind of stood out in the evaluation process, even though you said it's early? Sure. I mean, let's go with the young way Coop. I just hope he doesn't kick as many field goals next year. But, uh, you know, he, he got, had a very productive season. There's a lot of guys. I mean, systematically will change. And so some of it, you're seeing what's going to fit for us going forward, uh, especially on the defensive side of the ball. And then offensively, like I said, there's there's some good pieces here. I mean, Calvin Ridley had a heck of a year. Uh, Matt still, you know, he threw it at a high level. Uh, you know, you're excited about Chris Lindstrom. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And so there's some good pieces. And again, we're going to ask those guys every day, whoever we bring in here, you got to earn your job every day. I got to earn my job every day. That's going to be the same thing. We'll ask those guys whether you're going into year 14 or going into year two. Uh, we feel good. There's some pieces, and we'll continue to add. And for Terry, is there a, a position that is exceedingly deep in this year's draft? And on the flip side, is there a certain position that's pretty scarce when it comes to you know elite talent? Um, I, I don't know if I'd, I'd say that I, I classify anything right now. Um, and we're, again, we're still going through that process, and there's a lot of good players on both sides of the ball, though. Like, you're going to be able to um, 
you can really do some good things in this year's draft again at the top of the draft and i think it's strong right at the core too so um without being specific i think it's a it's a good draft there's a lot of talent kelsey conway my first question is for Coach Smith. Uh, we haven't gotten to talk to you since you made the announcement that Dean Pease was going to be your defensive coordinator. Why were some of the reasons that you wanted to make sure that you brought him to Atlanta? Yeah, well, I think Dean's body of work kind of speaks for itself, but Dean's also somebody he's not set in his ways. I mean, Dean's very flexible. He's adaptable. I uh, feel really good about the, about the entire staff, but the defensive side, we've got some really – really good experience over there and combine it with some young guys to give us a good mix. Uh, but Dean, Dean and I have a shared vision. You know, we'll, we'll play to the strengths of our team. We'll be multiple. Um, and it was really beneficial for me being a first time head coach. And I'm going to still call the plays is you have somebody with that kind of experience that you can lean on, especially on that side of the ball. And my second question is for Terry. What are some of the traits that you value most when you're evaluating the quarterback position? Well, I think it starts off at every position the same way. I, I would say it always starts off with, with the makeup of the individuals. We're going to assess the personal character, the football character. I mean, authors said it a number of times that you want a smart, tough, competitive football team. So uh, when we're talking about situational awareness and you're talking about critical times at the end of the games, at the end of half. So you want smart, tough, competitive football players. And I think that goes, um, that's at every position. Um, now, obviously, the quarterback position is, is different than some of them. So you really got to spend a lot of time with the quarterbacks and, and make sure you really assess the mental um, and, and that part of it so you can assess them as processors. So, um, but I would say at every position, um, we're looking for that same makeup. Jeff Schultz. Yeah, Terry, I know the majority of your background was on the, uh, was on the pro personnel side. So I'm just curious, uh, when you were in New Orleans, how involved uh, were you in the draft process at all, and and how much were you, you know, sort of depending on the um, the college personnel people who are who are here with the organization now? Yeah, yeah, that's a like I said before, like you, you can look at GMs from from a lot of different backgrounds. My background, I did grow up more in the pro department, but um, in New Orleans, it was an inclusive process, so I was heavily involved in all aspect, aspects, the salary cap and the college draft as the college guys were involved in the pro process. So <clears throat> I was heavily involved in all those areas. Um, but I think the most important thing is, is when you're in the GM seat, is hiring and empowering the right people. Because for example, we were in two weeks to college meetings and I got pulled out of those meetings a lot. I wasn't in those meetings um, as often as I'd like to be in those meetings. So you have to make sure you have people in place that you really trust. And, and I'm excited about having, again, I told you Kyle Smith was running those meetings and all he's done since he's been here, he hadn't done anything else but but run the meetings and evaluate players. That's all he does. He's obsessed with the process. Um, he's obsessed with ball, and and I'm excited about having him. Again, uh, Anthony Robinson, who actually interviewed for this general manager position, and um, and he was very deserving of, of, of getting an interview because he's special. He's a star in this building. Um, and again, Dewan Jones is somebody, and I'm not talking about everybody in the in, in the room because there's some really good people there, but Dewan Jones is another guy that I actually had a history with. And so they were in those meetings the entire time where I couldn't always be in there. So, um, so yes, I'm, I'm comfortable with my experience in that regard, but I'm very comfortable with the people um, that, that are gonna be empowered in, in the college process. And then uh, one question for Arthur, do you have a general philosophy about how a team should be built beyond you want to be physical and smart and all that stuff. Sure. You know, do, you, do you think it needs to start in certain areas of the team? Well, I mean, obviously, you, you'd love to be have depth on both sides of the line of scrimmage. I think that helps. Uh, you know, there's one thing that's 100% NFL, you're going to have injuries, and it's hard. It's hard when you when you lose up front, you lose guys. If you don't have enough guys that can, that can affect the quarterback, obviously, we all saw the Super Bowl. And you saw Tampa was able to get after Mahomes. I think that helps. Uh, but again, year to year, it changes. You know, your strength may be on the skill positions. You got to, and that, that's what I mean by playing at strength is, yeah, certain years we may have a lot of depth at tight end. And so you try to find ways, and there may be certain games in the, in the season. Uh, you know, you go back to that COVID game we had against Buffalo on Tuesday night, and we only had four wide receivers up. And so, you know, you're going to lean heavier on the tight ends, or maybe you have multiple running back spots, but you always love to have depth 
on both sides of the line of scrimmage in a, in a perfect world. Doesn't always happen that way, but it definitely helps. A yeah, quick follow-up. Have you found that you, you're in Terry's philosophy? I'm sure you talk, obviously, during the inter interview process, too. You're pretty much on the same page in terms of how to go about this uh, rebuild or build or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's year to year you build. I, mean, I know those narratives want to get out there and people want to, you know, frame frame something. Hey, this is this or whatever. I think the challenge, and that's why I love it, is, is every year, I mean, things change. You never just run it back. Uh, so it's it's a constant team building. And uh, and I really enjoyed working with Terry. I mean, we we have our beliefs, but both of us also, we're, we're also, I would like to think, really good listeners. I and mean, we've hired really good staff and, you know, you hire really good people and you let them do their jobs. And we listen, we facilitate. And to piggyback on what Terry said, I mean, there's things that you're doing year one that you have to have a strong staff because we get pulled out of things. Um, so very excited. It's been, it's been fun so far. And, 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 and I, you know, again, to piggyback on that, when uh, that's one thing we have done is, is like there are people that we brought here that we had previous relationships with, but, but we didn't just focus on that. We wanted to make sure, just like when you're bringing in players, you're going out and finding the very best. And that's what we did. Like um, there's people that are here now that um, we didn't have previous relationships with. Like uh, Chris Olson is an example of somebody that um, I didn't have a previous relationship with, but I did a lot of research on him, a lot of work on him. And and as a person and and as a professional, um, he's, he's off the charts. And um, and so bringing him in and since he's been here, Kirsten Groves was already here, but the work that they've done um, just uh, they literally never leave their office. Every time I go by there, the light's still on and they're working on the cap and they're coming up with a lot of different scenarios and a lot of different plans. But um, but that's just an example of somebody that um, Chris is that I didn't know, but we just want to make sure we brought in the best people. Michael Cunningham. Hi, Terry, it's a question for you. Um, I saw a revenue review where you were talking about the salary cap and you explained that, you know, you can't just keep kicking it down the road. Eventually you have to pay. But obviously NFL teams to a certain extent or another, that's how they operate. Uh, what factors do you consider when you're thinking about, you know, whether we're going to restructure and, and push things ahead, like you said? Yeah, you know, that that is a challenge. And um, we always still don't have all the information. We know where the floor is. Um, but we're hoping for the best in terms of what that number is going to end up being. Um, but, th but that's the process we're going through. Like I said, I know Chris and Kirsten are, are um, I think the only time Chris leaves the office is to get coffee. Uh, but they're working hard on going through that process and, and just determining um, all the different options. And we're going to have to really look at that and determine because uh, you have to have a balance. Um, you, you, you know, you want to make decisions that are going to help you as, as much as possible this year. But you also have to think in, about future years and think about 2022 and 2023 and and think big picture. But there's a balance to it because we want to be as competitive as possible now. But we also want to um, keep the future in mind and make sure we're doing things that, that we want to have sustained success. That's the goal here. So we have to have all those things in mind. Follow up on that. I mean, this was a team that went four and 12 last year with not very bad injury luck, pretty good injury luck. Um, you don't have many guys under contract. Uh, the salary cap's pretty tight. I mean, what are the avenues available to you to, to improve this roster? I, I think everything's in consideration. Um, and and look, there's we're going to have to make some hard decisions on some players on this roster, and and we're going to have to earn our job. The scouts, right? We're scouts, so we're going to have to go find players because you, you can't just build your roster with overpaid players in free agency or top draft picks. Um, we got to really dig. We have to dig and, and find value in free agency. And, and that's working with the coaches. And that's um, finding out exactly what they need and, and going and finding the players that they need. That's in that's throughout the entire draft. And that's an undrafted free agency. Um, so we have to be scouts and we have to go find good players that, um, that that really fit the makeup and the profile that we're looking for. Justin Felder. This question is for Terry. Uh, in a, a normal NFL offseason, this would be an NFL combine opportunity to get to meet face to face with a lot of players. You also are not going to have those individual visits. You said in response to Kelsey's question a few minutes ago, makeup is the number one thing you're looking for. Are you concerned that you won't be able to get as good a sense of the makeup of these guys when the interaction is so limited because of all the restrictions? 
I'm I'm really not. Um, number one, being able to sit in the meetings with the college scouts, they've done a really good job still getting the information they need to get. Um, still, they still have the same sources. And and again, when you're not in the schools or at the, you're not there as often, but they're still working their sources. They're still getting the information. And, um, and we're going to continue to work hard through that process. We're going to take advantage of the Zoom meetings. Look, there's some things that, um, that, that we've learned from last year's process that are going to help us moving forward and, and, um, and we'll continue to adopt um, even um, as we get out of the, the current circumstance that we're in in the world. But um, so, no, I, I don't think that's going to limit us. Uh, that's our job and, and everybody's playing with the same rules uh, across the board. The other 31 teams have the same rules. So we have to um, find a way to have an edge and, and, and find the best processes and make sure um, we're working the sources and getting the information we need to make um, well-informed decisions. We'll go to Mike Giardi. Uh, Terry, this is for you. Have teams already started to inquire about the first round pick or is it a little too soon for that? We're, we're talking to team. We talk to teams regularly around this time because we're talking about everything. Right. So um, so, so we start discussions, uh, just general discussions with teams kind of throughout. You really never stop talking to teams. Um, so I, I wouldn't be specific on any conversations um, that I've had with teams, but like I said, that, that is a prime spot to be in. And whether you're moving up or, or moving down or staying right there, um, I, I know we're going to have some good value. Is it even more prime, if you will, because of the buzz about the quarterbacks at the top of the draft and four, potentially five guys that at least the mock draft people's there going in the first round? Man, that's, that's, that's really, uh, it's really interesting. It's kind of unique and uncommon this year with, with all the discussion about the possible trades at the quarterback position and um it's one of those things that unless you're in a specific building um you don't really know that specific situation and, and it's tough to uh to really comment on what's going on in those areas but all we can do is um is really assess it and assess the market and um it's, it's unique with what's going on with that position but but yes i, I think that makes it even more prime hit follow-ups uh dealer do you have a follow-up Uh, yes, yes, I do. Um, <clears throat> for Arthur, what was the, uh, you know, rookies, Davidson and Hennessy, what was their evaluation um, uh, for them and your projection on what they can do to help you out in the future? Yeah, well, both of those guys will be given, you know, a clean slate. I mean, they were they were rookies. Uh, I think it was a really challenging year for, for a lot of rookies. Uh, you know, that, they probably, that class, uh, it was probably – hardest for them or you look around the league you know obviously some teams had more success with others but it's so early I mean to to, to give you a, a stamp of what this guy is going to be in, in year one as a rookie I mean some of these guys improve we're certainly excited about working with them um, I think they both you know they'll have the opportunity as everybody else to have a clean slate and to come earn a job but uh, certainly you know rookie year doesn't make or break a career and for Terry, I heard you talk about this, and I was in Green Bay when Kurt Warner was the fifth quarterback, you know, about how Ron was able to amass quarterbacks. You all, you got a blank slate pretty much behind Matt. What, what, uh, you know, what avenues can you all take or look at to, you know, put people with him and, and you know, put people in there for the future? Yeah, that that's an exciting uh, part of it because we're going to utilize all the avenues, whether it's in, in free agency, whether it's um, at any point in the draft and, and even after the draft. Um, you know, I've been in places where we've traded for quarterbacks and um, we're always looking to bring in um, bring in quarterbacks. And we have a real good from from Arthur Smith and uh, and, and to, to Dave we're going and to look like we have we have a really good um, offensive staff. And I, I think it's going to be attractive for it. I think quarterbacks are going to want to be here. Good to follow up for Jason Butt. Yes, this is for uh, Arthur. Um, you know, with Charles London, what traits do you think make him a good quarterback coach? And also, how important is it to ensure more minority coaches are in a pipeline to become coordinators and head coaches? Well, sure. Um, Charles is a guy. Charles and I shared an office in 2011 in Tennessee. So, 
you know, it's kind of like living in a dorm with somebody. You really get to know somebody, uh, you know, in coaching, you don't really know somebody until you work with them. And then if you share an office with them, you feel like you really get to know them. Uh, Charles is a phenomenal coach. I think, you know, the biggest requirement for being a good coach is being a teacher. And Charles is a heck of a teacher. And I think, you know, looking at Charles and then that role, it's, it's a role he wanted to expand and grow. And that's probably, you know, that stifled a lot of growth around. And, I, and I'm sensitive to it. You know, Mike Vrabel gave me a shot coming from the tight end room. Now, there have been precedent there and, and guys have become coordinators. But then there's a lot of people that say you only have to come to the quarterback room. And so I had never coached quarterbacks. And then, then I was in the quarterback room as the coordinator. And same thing with Charles. And Charles wants to grow. And he's, he's a great teacher. And he will. And he'll do a great job. And there's a lot of experience on the staff. Um, and certainly the same thing working with Ryan Tannehill. You know, you work with a veteran quarterback. And you get Matt Ryan. You're working with a veteran quarterback. I mean, you, you kind of feed off each other. And when you're coming from the running back room, I think there's a lot of misconceptions, too. You're heavily involved in protection. So that's very, you know, carries over right to the quarterback room. That, that's critical on, on a third down and our blitz pickup. Uh, you're involved with the run scheme, obviously, you know, with the with the tracks uh, in, the, in the ball handling. And uh, and I, I'm really excited that Charles is part of our staff. But it, it's a it's a huge help. You want to expand people. You never want to stifle people's growth. And I think the more you you got to give somebody a shot. And, and it's, it's a perfect situation for Charles. And I, I couldn't be more excited that he's here with us. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. Maria Martin. Hey, this is a question for Arthur. Um, I'll try to make sure that my dog doesn't run in the shop. Yeah, I, keep seeing him, I keep seeing him coming in the frame. I know. I'm sorry. About that. I no, that's awesome. I think it's good. <laughs> sorry. Okay, so, uh, you know, we were talking about the quarterbacks a little bit, and you talked about how Matt Ryan is a veteran. How much um, do you place in the value of bringing in maybe a veteran backup to boost that room? Oh, I think it goes back to Terry, and we're not trying to be evasive. It's just there's so many things at play. I mean, if, if you know, this happens, all right, we can add, a, add this guy here. And, and as you go into the draft, I mean, you're looking to add everywhere. Obviously, we won't go on with just one quarterback in the training camp. We'll, we'll have multiple spots there. And, and I like the follow up. Who else was in that Green Bay quarterback room? Do you like, was it, was it uh, Favre and Hasselback and Brunel? Was that Brunel? Uh, Aaron Aaron Brooks left, Ty Dittmer, and uh, Kurt was uh, like fifth. So it was passed up after Mark and, and Hasselback had been there. So either way, no pressure yeah, yeah, yeah. to add that kind of depth to the quarterback room. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it, we're just, again, it, it, we'll look for help anywhere, and we'll look to add. Um, so, again, a lot of that plays into the salary cap, who's available, who you can sign, who you can draft, and it's all, it's all in play. Yeah, Terry, often um, general managers in any sport in your position are going to say we're traveling down parallel roads. We're trying to win now and build for the future. Um, but the reality is you you generally have to choose one or the other in terms of your transactions like this offseason. So is it fair to say that as you and you and your coach or you and Arthur, you know, are building this team now in this offseason um, or you're adjusting the roster that the eye is more on 2022 and beyond than it is necessarily trying to win in 2021. Yeah, Jeff, you know, we have, we have over 50% of the roster to fill for, from where we are now. So we have such a long way to go and, and we're going to work hard to bring in the right players, um, the right makeup, regardless of, where, regardless of if we're talking about undrafted free agents or, or, or guys that aren't making a lot of money, we're going to bring in the right players and, I don't think any of those players are going to say they're not coming here to compete to win every game that they can. Um, so we're going to try to build it the right way. And, and we're always, whether you're talking about this year or three years from now, we're going to always have the future in mind and, and make, make calculated decisions. So, um, so I, and I understand your question. I understand the question you're asking, but, um, but right now we're just going to work hard to get where we need to get and get some good players in and, um, and, and get ready to compete. Thanks. Mike Giardi. Uh, this is for Arthur. Arthur, how, how much did you, um, how much do you want for different voices and different eyes in some of these Zoom meetings with the college kids? And I, of course, I kind of ask because your, your old team, Tennessee, had the situation with Isaiah Wilson this last year and John Robinson was just on record saying like, the guy that showed up in the fall wasn't the guy we talked to 
did you learn something from that experience and do you want to translate to what you're doing now? Well, I think you learn from every experience, you know, just because that happened, you know, those are, there's so many factors and variables that can happen, whether we were, in, you know, in a Zoom era or, you know, in normal. I mean, there's things that you can't control um, and, and we're never going to be perfect. And, and I don't think anybody is. I mean, whether, you know, I'm not going to have the perfect play call every time. Terry's not going to have the perfect draft pick. You know, you sure, certainly you try to minimize risk in certain areas, but there's lessons learned, uh, I think, in everything we do. And uh, like like I was talking about earlier, just in terms of how we adapted to our teaching methods, uh, you, you know, you adapt it to how you interview. And, and that certainly helped me when we were interviewing coaches. Uh, so you learn from everything. But th that's, a, you know, there's always exceptions. I, you know, that's I don't really want to comment on, you know, something going on in Tennessee. Sure. Understood. I, and just quickly, while you mentioned that, how do you approach getting ready for off-season training activities again not really knowing whether it can be done virtually or in person or, or sure. how that's all going to fly yeah you just have to have contingency plans so here, here's the calendar if you know perfect situation if we, if we have the the normal off-season if we don't here's you know here's plan b here's plan c and that was the the best lesson because you know everybody says that and then you actually had to apply that to last year and we felt we felt we did for the most part in the, in Nashville. So we did do the same thing here. It's the only way I know how to do it. Going to follow up from Zach Klein. Uh, Terry, shoot me straight. When you're at a quiet moment at the office or the house, do you ever look up mock drafts and say, "Oh no, the Dolphins are picking him. We need to move up or do something like that." <laughs> you know what we do? What we do do is um, we always have mock drafts the right before the draft, a few days before. And so basically you'll take like picture this all the scouts in a room and they'll each have teams so you'll have a scout with um each scout will have like four teams and you'll literally go through a mock draft and and you'll give them you'll print out these mock drafts and certain certain scouts will be taking based off need and certain scouts will be taking based off best player available and you'll throw a wild card in there and they can just take anybody it's always interesting to go through the mock draft and then see who's there and then you go in and you make a decision on on who you're going to take now the the first round mock draft will be a lot quicker um being at four but it's um but but it's kind of cool going through those mock drafts and just seeing and, and sometimes um when you actually get to the actual draft um some of the scenarios uh get close to playing out so so yeah we, we definitely do the mock draft then you hook somebody up who had a good draft and make the guys who which is brutal run laps or something <laughs> It, it it's actually a pretty fun process and there's always somebody that just doesn't that struggles with it and they pick guys in the first round that should go in the third it's always there's always somebody that that messes it up but it's it's a fun process uh kelsey conway hey this is a question for terry you mentioned your strategy during the draft about how when you start reaching, that's when you can get in trouble. So often it's better to take the best player available. When you're taking over a roster in your first season, how do you weigh wanting to take the best player available, but knowing that there are some glaring roster needs at specific positions? Yeah, good question. And we this is another discussion we had a couple of days ago, and you, you always work really hard to um, – in free agency to bring in players and to, to to kind of fill some needs as much as you can in free agency and um, bring in players that fill those needs because that gives you more confidence um, to move forward with the right approach in the draft and so you're always going to have that philosophy and you you you, you never want to reach for needs in, in, in the draft but when you address some of those needs prior to the draft that just gives you um uh, you feel better about um, going about the right approach in the draft. Tori McElhaney with the follow-up. Yes, I have one for Arthur and one for Terry, so I'll go with Arthur first. Um, I wanted to go back to what you're saying about that 2011 staff. And I know Dave was talking about that when we talked to him like last month about how that staff was exceptionally close because it was a time in which you didn't, didn't have a lot of knowns about what was going to happen in regards to the lockout. I was just curious how do you kind of relate that to what's going on now and the unknowns of the scouting situation, the unknowns of first-time head coach. I'm kind of just looking at the parallels of those situations. Yeah, no, there's, there, there's a lot of things we learned from that year. Um, the lockout year was very interesting. We were a new staff that year, as Dave referenced. Uh, 
you know, it was a top heavy quarterback draft at the time, right? So you had Cam Newton and then uh, Blaine Gabbert, Jay Clocker, Christian Ponder, I think all went in the top 15, give or take, if I remember correctly. Maybe I'm missing somebody. Um, so there's, you know, there is a lot of parallels. I mean, you got to do your due diligence. I mean, that's the thing you look back and year to year. I mean, it's the hardest position, I think, in professional sports to play and to play at a high level for a long time. And that's why you're seeing right now. I mean, I think just look at the, the last 10 years of first round quarterbacks. Um, it's not easy. And there's a, there's a lot of things that factor into it. But yeah, that was a unique year. Uh, lessons learned there. I mean, we, I think we ended up going nine and seven. Uh, we actually came up here to Atlanta and lost in a pretty relatively close game, I believe, at the end that we came back. But um, yeah, there's a lot of lessons applied about when you have to install things and, and evaluations. And Terry, I wanted to go back to what you were talking about with Chris and you kind of said that he doesn't, the only time he leaves is to get a cup of coffee. And I was just wondering kind of what does his day look like from your point of view? And does he have any quirks that you find super interesting to kind of take a hold of this challenge for the salary cap? <laughs> well, the funny thing is the first day he got here, he was all like cleanly shaven and just like, you know, all put together. And every day I see him, his beard gets a little longer and, um, he doesn't, <laughs> he, he really is look. And, and again, it's, it's him and Carson and, and they've been in there on um, their offices are right next to each other. And, and every time, whether I'm getting in the office or leaving the office, that light's always on. And, um, and they're working hard because there are, there are so many variables, um, with, with, with everything. And there's a lot of decisions that we have to make and everything you do affects everything. And, and, um, we've challenged them to, Hey, we have to look at, we have to think big picture. It's not just about getting underneath the cap we have to make sure we're making big picture decisions and and that's going to it's going to be a challenge because it's going to be on us like i said we have to find value um it's a challenge for for us and the scouts that we have to make sure we find value in all areas of player procurement and and they're not all going to be high draft picks they're not all going to be high paid free agents we have to find value in all areas but um but it's been uh again i just met chris and um, but he's been awesome. He, he, he's really smart and um, he's working real hard right now. 